What's up again, everybody? Today in this video, we are going to talk through the entirety of the Flesh and Blood database website. I'm gonna show you how to use the deck builder portion, which I use literally every single time I build a deck. I'll show you how to look at the collection of cards within the entirety of the game, how you can add your own cards into your own collection so that you can build within the uh, website based on the collection that you own, um, and how you can look at other people's decks as well to get inspiration. Before we get too far into it though, I do wanna say Happy New Year and thank you for making 2020 the biggest year for this channel it's ever seen. We gained over double the amount of subscribers we started with last year, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do this year and how much this channel grows because of the support that you give. If you wanna support the channel further, you can hit the uh, little subscribe button. You can see we're getting closer to the mark of 2,000 520 subscribers and if you want to support monetarily you can head on over to patreon.com and support the channel there that helps a ton with like box opening videos covering the costs of those sorts of things all right let's get started now that i've said all those things i'm literally just going to turn off the uh, things that are above me so you can better see uh, what we're actually going to look at all right i've repositioned everything so hopefully you have a maximum viewing space for seeing what we're actually gonna see. So here's the homepage of FabDB, as you can see if you click on the, the logo for FabDB. Solid logo, by the way. If you click it, it takes you here. Um, and the very first thing we're gonna cover is how to actually search up a card and kind of see what that card does. It's very easy. On the very front page, you just search for a card. It's that simple. So let's search for like Spring Tunic. Spring Tunic, and uh, there's two displayed here. That's because it's showing you two different types of spring tunics. Uh, one of them is the, and I believe this is this is the, the one with the printed L. So this is the unlimited version of spring tunic, or it could be technically the, um, the one from Crucible of War. Uh, and then there's the other one, which if I go back, I think I can, oh, this is everything, whoops. Let's do uh, spring tunic. Uh, the other one is the alpha version. And the cool thing about uh, just searching up cards here on the website, it gives you a like a text-based breakdown of what the card does. Uh, it gives you like uh, any possible ruling clarification kind of things. Uh, it'll even tell you like variance, rarity, like so this is all searchable terms. I guess you could leave comments if you wanted to. Uh, but this is the coolest thing in my mind. It'll give you prices based on um, a certain number of websites that sell singles. So for example, as you see, it's it's scalping the price off of Golden Phoenix Games and off of Fab Foundry. And then you can take that knowledge and do with it what you will. So the cold foil pricing here um, is displayed. And then it also shows you the rainbow foil pricing. And that's where you got um, Spring Tunic out of the unlimited Welcome to Wraith box. And then the regular one, which is from uh, Crew which is the Crucible of War. Um, but that's true of every single card. So if you wanted to look at uh, other high rarity cards, it'll show you your pricing here and it'll do the all the same info. Look, there's someone that said, cool. <laughs> that's their comment for Eye of Ophidia. Uh, but the, the, entire, the entire database of cards, the entire collection of the game can be found here. You can look at it all, and it's all broken down by that. So if you, I don't know why I keep clicking legendary because they look so cool, I guess. You can see pricing guides for everything. You can see um, like clarifications on how it works. I'm telling you, it is incredibly powerful to just look through the collection here and uh, take a look at cards you may not understand or you may want a deeper dive into. Like how really does Aether Spindle uh, work. You just kind of like look and read through. This is what opt is. Uh, if there were some weird questions, um, this will look, by the way, if you, you do not opt if Aether Spindle does not deal arcane damage, which is kind of cool. You can't opt zero in that X version. So uh, it's a really great tool to just kind of know what a card does, figure out how to play that card, and then see how much it would cost to buy a card from one of these websites. Now, uh, it does look like it's only scalping from two websites, uh, Golden Phoenix Games and Fab Foundry. Fab Foundry is obviously a pretty big one. I've heard of Golden Phoenix Games, but I've never been on their website myself, so I can't speak to uh, to the, the website. But I'm, I'm imagining that if it's pulling the prices from them, it's pretty pretty reputable, reputable website. Nevertheless, you can just use this website for this, and it's already worth 
just hopping on and creating a free account for. And now I wanna to jump to a different portion of the website, one that I very much enjoy and that I'm going to continue to use um, further and further down the line. This is the My Collection section. You can find it in the Cards uh, drop-down menu over to My Collection. And this is basically just an entire catalog of the entirety of the game currently, broken down by card, um, literally by card, and you can just go through and you can add how many cards you have for each of those cards, like how many iterations of it. So for example, if you have three Eye of Ophidius somehow, uh, then you can put that down. Obviously, you'd, maybe you'd make them foil. <laughs> I guess you would do that. I don't have any, so I, don't, I wouldn't know myself. But you can go through the entire set and you can add like all of the cards that you have so that at a glance, at any moment, you can see a digital version of your collection, essentially. So you can have your physical version, but if you go to a game store and you're like, hey, let me check to see if I already have this card so I don't need to buy it or I don't need to trade for it, then you can pull up your, uh, your device and you can go to the website and you can check the entirety of your collection. Um, and the uh, easy way to do that is by going to all and then just looking at every single card in the, in the game and putting a number by it by just moving these little checkbox. I mean, it's super easy. You can also go into the advanced search tab and uh, break things down by set or by the pitch value of a card, uh, by the cost of a card. Card type obviously is an easy way to sort through certain cards and uh, rarity as well. So you can literally look at the entirety of, like if you wanted to see all of the tokens in the game, uh, you can like look and see what kind of cards uh, are generated or what kind of things you'll find on token cards. Um, you can see promo cards, what promo cards are out there, and then you can keep track of those by using the little plus and minus sign. So a really, really powerful tool at your disposal by using FabDB. I do wanna pause and take a moment to go over here to the articles section. If you click the latest news, it shows you all of the articles that are written here on FabDB. In addition to uh, having a database and just sort of housing a database of cards as well as of um, community deck builds, they also have a bunch of articles that are geared towards a variety of different topics like um, deck building, strategy, uh, game theory, uh, things about the community. And so if you want more uh, things to just digest, more content to digest, uh, you know, reading or, or really anything. Like I think they have some videos as well. Um, hop over to here and check this out because uh, they do have a bunch of different uh, articles and I think they have a couple of videos as well for you to be able to read and just get better with the game with. Let's talk about the biggest and probably the best feature on the entire site and that is this Dex tab. The first thing we're gonna do is talk about the browse. Here we find every deck in the database that has been made public. When you make a deck in the database, you can choose to keep it private, which is how it naturally begins, or you can make it public. And by making it public, you make it visible here on the databases, browse decks list. And you can see that there's a lot of these that are 51, 51. That's most likely because those are blitz decks. Um, but you can sort this. Like, so for example, here are all of the heroes in the game. You can see any of these heroes by just clicking them. So like if you want to see all the Azalea decks that are public, again, that are made public, you can hit Azalea and hit search. Now, uh, because it's searching for the young hero, just Azalea, not Azalea Ace in the Hole, it's most likely going to find a bunch of Blitz decks, which it does. So here's a bunch of Blitz, Blitz decks. And the nice thing about this tool and the nice thing about people making their decks public is it allows other people to get inspired by what you've created or vice versa. It allows you to be inspired by what other people are creating. For example, if you like the idea, um, like Noxious has been doing lately, where you go and you make a deck with like just commons and rares or just commons even, um, if you like that idea and you want to kind of see what his thought or anybody else's thoughts on building a deck like that is, well, you can just click his deck. This is Noxious's um, Zero Rare Azalea Blitz deck, and uh, this is how he's decided to construct that deck. And you can look at it and you go, oh, I like that. I like the idea of this, but what if we swapped out this and put in this other thing? Well, you can actually do that. If you hit Copy Deck right over here, it makes a copy and it opens it immediately, which I think is just fantastic. 
This is the loadout that was uh, put in by Noxious. And this is all of the cards. These are all of the cards that you uh, that were included in the deck, I should say. Um, and there's a way to change the settings. Like if I do this, this is the normal view. If you um, haven't decided to support on Patreon and you just want to use the free version of the entirety of the tool set, this is what you'd see. And it's just you know, straight up, you can hover over the cards that you've selected or the cards that are, um, you know, available to be added. You can see you can just hit the plus or the minus to add more cards or less cards. Uh, this is the, this is the uh, section for uh, equipment and weapons. You can then choose to edit it. And again, here are all the deck cards that have been selected to put into the deck. And here's the entirety of cards that are available to go into an azalea deck now the cool thing again about this um, whole process is that it does filter things based on what you can and cannot put into the deck so by being azalea you can't play brute cards and so this uh, tool over here will not show you brute cards it will show you generic cards and ranger cards and if you don't want to flip through this or if you don't know the name of something by searching it here you can't find a card you can search by you know the type of card so non-attack actions are all listed here attack actions attack reactions defense reactions every card weapons equipment instance items you can sort it all by that uh, you can see everything in the tool so let's say for example i'm going to play azalea and i'm going to use the uh the noxious zero rare build but i'm going to add cash in <laughs> for some reason you think okay we're gonna play cash in in azalea blitz it's gonna be sweet it's gonna be sick let's do it i don't know how we're gonna pay for it but we're putting it in you literally just hit the plus buttons and then after you play it and you go well that actually is terrible i'm gonna take that out you just hit the minus button there you go no cash in azalea at least not right now just wait for monarch that's a spoiler I, it's not a spoiler Anyway, <laughs> I don't know how I got off on that tangent. So you can add cards very easily. You can uh, take cards away very easily. And while you do that, and I'm going to do it again, watch over here. As you add cards, the stats over on the side change on the fly. They change as you change the, uh, the deck composition. And this is, this is my favorite thing. I think like 100% this is my favorite thing that the, uh, that the tool here does. It tells you your cost amounts. So here we have 20 cards in this deck that cost zero and 20 cards that cost one. And then down here it tells you your pitch values. 24 of these cards in this deck pitch for one resource. So they're red cards. Uh, 11 pitch for two resources and uh, five pitch for three resources. So you see this breakdown, this handy little breakdown, and you go, okay, I have most of my cards in this deck that are going to pitch for a single resource, and most of my cards in this deck are going to cost O or one, zero or one, right? So you have this wonderful little intuitive breakdown of going, oh, okay, I have so many blues in this deck. Look at me go, all of these blues. Look, I have 15 blues. But most things pitch for one. What am I spending all these resources on? I don't need that many blues. I'm going to take out a bunch of blues, right? So you see this way of um, of constructing a deck and using these graphs and these uh, these stats and analytics, whatever you want to call them, to understand what you're doing better. And I love that. Now, again, uh, this is the, the view that I prefer. The view that I prefer is this one because you can see everything visually. And then from this, this deck screen or from this edit screen, I should say, uh, it breaks it down like this where you can also see everything visually. I'm a visual person. I will much prefer looking at the cards themselves and going, oh, yeah, I'm looking for poison the tips. Put two of those in there. And uh, then I come back up here. Oh, I don't want any, um, I don't know, slogisms in here. Let's remove the slogisms. Just clicking on them takes them away, which is super cool. Uh, I don't know, let's take away random stuff like two sleep darts. Maybe we don't want the sleep darts in there. So there's another view that you can access. Now this view is accessible by becoming a patron. And I think the patron um, amounts are pretty cheap. So if you like this view, you can uh, consider doing that. And that does su support the channel. Uh, excuse me, it supports the, the website in uh, operation costs and stuff like that. Uh, you can also do a full screen view, which is kind of cool. Uh, I have this very zoomed in because my laptop monitor that we're currently recording on uh, is pretty small. So I make my uh, my zooms pretty large. 
but this is the deck creation. Uh, you can you can add sideboards in, which is really cool. I'm gonna make that smaller. You can add sideboards in, and this is great for um, organizing your sideboard with large decks. Obviously, a classic constructed deck, you would include sideboard cards so that you can swap them in and out. Uh, and then this is the other big thing. So this is the settings tab. And here we can change the name. Uh, DM Armada, oh, that's terrible. Armada's bad deck. There you go. This is my bad deck. Okay, you can change the format. It's open. I don't know what that means. You do whatever format, I don't know. Limit cards to collection is a really cool feature. Now this one's gonna be tough because as of right now, they don't have the um, ability to put in Arcane Rising or Crucible of War collections yet. Uh, so this is still a work in progress, but uh, if we just leave that alone, it won't be any big deal. This is where you can share with the public is by hitting this to public. Deck visibility going from pri private to public uh, allows people to see it. And then finally, you can change the card back. Why would you wanna change the card back if this is completely online? Well, if you play through Tabletop Simulator and you want different card backs instead of just the standard uh, flesh and blood card back that we have, uh, let's see, I don't have a loose card. Where's a loose card? Here, like this one. All right, if you don't want this card back and you wanted a different one that someone else has kind of messed around with, well, there's a bunch to choose from. Uh, once you hit save, it will make all of these changes for you. There's also a couple of other things. Like there's a in, sort of like an advanced stats screen here, which is pretty cool. So it tells you how many cards, how many class cards, how many generic cards, uh, attacks, attack reactions, defense reactions. Um, this breakdown right here is super important in my mind. Uh, a, figuring out your pitch cost versus your uh, your values that you're actually paying for. These two numbers are super important to understand. Uh, and then also knowing your like average block is really good. Um, you want it close to three, generally, unless you're just not worried about blocking. And then like how defensive you can be as well. So there's, there's a ton of stuff to look at. Look, I could go on for a while. There's a ton of stuff to look at when you're creating your deck, but this tool just makes it easier. It just makes it simple and easy to make a bunch of decks. If you wanna see decks that you've made, you just go to Deck Builder on this drop down, and then there's a list. Look, look at all these decks that I've built. I could turn the page, but I'm not gonna. Look, there's my bad deck right there. And this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about. And this is, this is also a really cool feature. If you come over here to test on DM Armada's bad deck, or really any of these, if you go over here to test and you click test, it puts you into this screen and it allows you to draw four cards and then just play out a couple of sample hands. Really, you can play out the entire deck, but you can play out sample hands. So let's play out a sample hand. Um, let's assume that we're playing the uh, red liner so we don't have to pitch anything to put an arrow into our, uh, into our arsenal face up. So we're gonna put this into the arsenal. You click it, you can tell it where to go. We're gonna put that into the arsenal face up using the, uh, the bow and then we're gonna play it. We just click it away, so that goes away. Um, you can pitch things, so we have to pitch obviously to do that. Maybe we pitch and then we play that first. So we, we did all of these things, and then when we're done, we hit draw, and it replaces the hand. Oop, there we go. It replaces the hand for everything that you use. Now, this card stayed in our hand, so maybe at the end of our turn, we arsenaled it. We could have done that as well, and then it would draw up normally, uh, like you could, then play it and then arsenal it and then play it and then so those two cards should be gone so you get the picture right you can just keep drawing it replaces the hand you you mess around with it maybe you have a card that uh, draws you a card so you hit draw one and you have this effect going uh, it will hold arsenal things over per turn so like even if i hit draw it'll just draw me stuff which is pretty neat um, this arsenal card will sit there even if I like, let's just say play and play and play, things will replace, but the arsenal card will sit there until you use it. And so this is a way to simulate out and kind of get a feel for the deck that you've created before you actually put the deck together in real life. If you're not using this tool to create your decks, then I think you may be trying too hard or you may be doing more work than you have to. Let's just put it that way. This database is fantastic for just about everything that you'd wanna do within the game currently. Um, it's got uh, ways to do all of these wonderful things and it helps so much, particularly when it comes to fine tuning deck lists. I mean, once you've gotten it and put it together, 
All you have to do is play it and then you can get the last bit of information of what feels good, what doesn't feel good. But it even comes close with the test feature to doing that for you. So that is the entirety of FabDB in a nutshell. If you have questions about how to use any of these features um, in more in depth, let me know in a comment below. If you like this uh, entire website, if you like this video, if you like Flesh and Blood, please consider hitting the like. And if you'd like to subscribe to support the channel, hit that little red button down at the bottom. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.